Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. Here we're finally going to get our feet wet with real confidence interval type of problems. And uh, I promised you before, and I'll reiterate it right now, these kinds of problems are not very hard now that we know the background material, we know the concept of a confidence interval, we know the concept of, of the critical value of Z and all the, uh, the terms such as the margin of error and the point estimate and things like that. So if you don't know that stuff, then things like a confidence interval seem very difficult. But let's work a problem here, and we'll see that they're quite very, very simple. So for the first problem, it says we ask 100 people how much a Supreme Pizza costs uh, in their area. Uh, the average answer is $25.99 with a standard deviation of $15.50. Uh, construct a 99% confidence interval that contains the average price of a Supreme Pizza nationwide. All right, this is the uh, classic type of problem that you really are wanting to do when you're using a confidence interval. It's also very practical because clearly if we want to figure out what the average price of a Supreme Pizza is across the country, it would be impractical for us to go all around every city and every pizza joint in the country and go figure out how much a Supreme large pizza costs and then take the average of every, every place across the country. It's just not going to happen. So what we instead do is we take a small sample. In this case, we ask for 100 people, and we just ask those 100 people uh, what the price of their Supreme Pizza is. Now, we can average the, the data that we get, and we'll get a pretty good estimate for the average price of a Supreme Pizza in the country. But clearly, the data that we collect, the 100 people we ask, uh, giving us that, that sample estimate for the, for the price of the Supreme Pizza, um, we expect it to be relatively close to the national average, but we don't expect it to be exact. Of course we don't. So the, the idea of a confidence interval is starting from that sample uh, average that we have from the 100 people, on plus or minus on the top and on the bottom of that average that we get from our data, what is an appropriate range to give us, in this case, a 99% confidence that the national average is going to lie in that band? because you're never going to know the real answer. The best you can do is bound the problem, and here we're using a very high 99% confidence interval. All right, so in order to use the techniques that we outlined in the last sections, we have to verify that a couple of things are true. First thing is we do not know the sigma, the uh, standard deviation of the population. We don't know that. In fact, the problem just says we ask 100 people. It gives us uh, the average answer of those 100 people, $25.99, um, it gives us a standard deviation of 1550, but but you have to realize that that standard deviation and the problem, fifteen dollars and fifty cents, that's the standard deviation of the hundred people that we ask. All right, that you can always calculate. If you get a hundred numbers, you can always calculate the mean of those numbers and the standard deviation of those numbers. We've done that many many times in the past. So the standard deviation.